Okay, so my last video was talking about bird flu. This one's going to talk about bird flu also. Today I'm going to go through some uh, things you need to know about bird flu and also some of the things that I'm doing here to prevent an outbreak on this farm. So, to start off, I'm going to read you a little handout from the University of Minnesota here. It says, Signs of avian influenza. Extreme depression. Birds get very quiet. Difficulty breathing. Decrease in feed and water intake. Swelling or purple discoloration in head, eyelids, comb, wattle, and hawks. Decreased in egg production. Sudden unexplained death. The birds do not survive the illness. There is no vaccine. How do you protect your flock? Avoid attracting wild birds and waterfowl. Limit or halt travel with your birds. Limit your birds' visitors. Clean up spills. Reduce puddles. Avoid visiting ponds. Keep feed contained. So, here's some biosecurity tips that they've included. Some of you are probably going to roll your eyes at this. That's your choice. You don't like it, you can click off. Keep your distance. Restrict access to property and birds. Consider fencing off area to form barriers. Clean area immediately surrounding your birds. And a dirty area is adjacent to that area. So in other words, just think of it as a border crossing. Only allow people who take care of your birds to come in contact with them. Do not attend shows or events where birds are present. I'm going to go a step further and say that up here they're allowing a lot of sales and swaps as long as there's no birds. But uh, it's kind of my experience that if you've got goats or highland cows or emus or whatever it is they're allowing there, you probably got some chickens. So going to that event, you still got people that are going to be there wearing their chore boots and you could track it home. Prevent game birds and migratory waterfowl from having contact with your flock. If your birds are outdoors, try to keep them in a screened area. Keep it clean. Germs can be picked up on shoes and clothing. Have a pair of shoes and a set of clothes only for being around your birds. Scrub your shoes. Wash your clothes. Wash your hands. Keep cages clean. Change food and water daily. Clean and disinfect equipment that comes in contact with the birds or their droppings. This includes feed scoops, shovels, rakes, and brooms. All manure must be removed before disinfectant can work. So in other words, spray in your muddy boots ain't going to do any good. you got to clean them before you spray them. Don't haul disease home. Car and truck tires, cages, equipment can all harbor germs. Clean and disinfect items before they return to your property. So, if you watch this channel for a while... Uh, you know that this garage here is where we keep the feed. And uh, I decided I needed a better door to keep things out. So I made this here door. You might notice that the hinge is kind of a weird hinge. The reason I did that is so that this door can do its job year-round. See, we get snow and ice build up, and that would prevent a door from swinging out. So this way... The door can actually slide up and down in these eye bolts as needed to accommodate that. This is the entrance we're using to go inside. We have our chore clothes, our chore boots in here. We're actually going to put a soak tub in there for our chore boots today because for the disinfectant we're using to work at its peak effectiveness, it needs prolonged contact with the surface. In other words, yeah, some of the things I'm doing, they'll, they, they'll kind of work, but to let it soak, it's going to work better. 
before we enter the house, we got a boot scrubber here. You just run your boot through it like that. That's all you do to that. We have another scrubber at the other end of the house, and that one, we use that entrance for coming home from work, coming home from town, and we only enter and exit this entrance for chore time. Now, as far as our feed and water for doing chores, we've uh, also stepped up our security on that because I know for a fact that, uh, number one, the old lid we used to put on the feed wagon, which was a piece of plywood, was uh, just kind of not efficient for throwing back on in between buckets, and then you'd have wild birds go in and get in the feed, and the same with the water. So now, we basically did a low-budget roll tarp. These tarps are sections cut out of a, what are they, about a thousand pound or two thousand pound poly tote that uh, my boss gets some of his feed from. I cut it along the seam so it wouldn't fray. On this side, I've put tiny little bungee cords. And this then opens up like this. And then I get my bucket full and I just close it. And when I'm done, I tighten them back down. Feed wagon is basically the same setup. The only difference is, since it's a smaller wagon and I didn't want the tarp to fray, I actually had to roll the tarp up along an old shovel handle on the back side. The tarp is uh, connected with just a couple nails and some pieces of flat board nailed into the wooden side extensions that I put into both wagons. It is made keeping stuff out of the feed and water a lot easier. This one I had a little bit of a gap left at the back so I nailed a 2x4 in there. Um, eventually I'm going to put some hooks on that for the egg bu buckets and that kind of thing. In both of our vehicles we have a one gallon sprayer and a spray hose and a scrub brush and we use those to clean the tires on our vehicles when we come home every night and we're doing that part ways down our driveway so that uh, we're not tracking things in hopefully we've also been working really hard on getting this area cleaned out and organized away from the birds um, that's partially for something else, but, you know, like I said, clean up around your bird area doesn't hurt in the least, so I figure I count that towards part of it. I've also made a sign. All vehicles are to stop before this sign. There is a phone number on it. You don't get to see the phone number. Eventually, I'll probably end up putting a gate down here one of these days, but for now, that's where we want to, anyone who's got a delivery package for us or you know the guys that bring the propane up to the house or whatever they got to stop there call and either we'll come get what we need from them or we'll provide them what they need to scrub their tires these hoses are going to get moved today and then that gate will be able to be shut again uh, not that that would necessarily stop any migratory waterfowl from flying inside of the enclosure, but it would cut down on any potential foot traffic bringing anything in in between shore time. Speaking of foot traffic, this is going to get moved outside of the fence today. But um, I really wanted to make a foot bath set up, and I've been thinking about it for quite some time. And I figured it's just time to go ahead and do it. So I'm going to show you how this thing opens up.
So that's how it opens up. Got to lift the lid, reach in, grab this 2x2. Two two. The 2x2 two two sits in a notch here, and there's a screw that it catches here. The chain is to keep the wind from blowing the lid across and over. There's a couple pieces of 2x4 that the hinges are mounted to. They're a little flimsy. This piece here lifts up and out. The pieces of galvanize are just tabs to hold it in place. On the back side are two more tabs. And basically that creates a pocket for the frame to sit in. When you walk in, again you scrape your boot, you do it in the forward motion we found out because if you do it in the backwards motion it kicks mud all over the place. And then this tub here is where we put our disinfectant water. Mix that up fresh every day. Scrub our boots good. Give our feet a little bath here. And uh, use it as needed throughout the course of chore time. You know, sometimes you forget something up to the yard. You got to run back up there. Well, you got to come in and dip your toes again. And then when it's all said and done, at the end of the day, we dump that out in the uh, gateway over here hopefully to decontaminate anything that might be in the direct path of the gateway. So, I'm sorry if this video seems uh, kind of short, not as fun, not as entertaining. Maybe I sound a little irritated. If I do, I apologize. There's a lot of bad information going around about this disease and uh, while I can't make you do anything with your birds nobody can at the same time I just feel like it's my job to put out there what I'm doing in case you're looking for that information if you're looking for information that is counter to what I say there's several other channels on YouTube that are uh, basically saying this is no big deal. Don't worry about it. Just keep doing what you're doing. And it's your choice if you want to go over there and watch those. Um, I'm just doing this because, uh, you know, sometimes, especially if you're new with birds and something like this comes along, you have no idea where to start and hopefully... This gives people some ideas. Uh, this is, I mean, especially in my state right now, it's popping up all over the place, and I just feel like I can't be taking that risk. So, thank you for watching, and uh, good luck to you.